it's Diva Week Part 2 and I hope you are all looking at your fiddle leaf figs in a slightly different light after Thomas's advice on Friday. Some of you did say, oh I find the fiddle leaf fig is super easy but of course not every diva is a diva in every situation so good luck to you if you find the fiddle a good an easy plant. And today's plant is Cissus discolor, the begonia vine. And I'm joined by professional horticulturist and plant geek Leslie Halleck. Leslie, we are here to talk about Cissus discolor. This, I was surprised when I suggested this to you because you seem to think this is a really easy, or not an easy plant, but that it's not a diva. Let's talk about Cissus discolor and why some people struggle with it and why it's easy for others. Well, I I think that as a plant parent, right, as with human children, you know, different plants are going to present different challenges to different houseplant keepers, depending on your particular situation and your personal habits and your personal, you know, personality, you know, your approach towards plant care and water. So what may be easy for one person may present challenges for another. And, and that is no judgment on anybody's uh, plant parenting skills. So even though I can't say that I have a lot of challenges with this discolor, I know why some people do, because it can be a little, persnickety about things like temperature. So temperature, it likes it warm. So this plant, uh, some people call it tapestry vine or um, begonia vine, even though it is not a begonia. It's actually in the Vitaceae family. So it's related to grapes. Um, But it is from warm regions in Java and Cambodia. And so what can often happen where I think people run into to struggles with it is if it if it gets a little chilly, if it gets cold in your house in the winter, or maybe you have it next to a window or a windowsill where it gets cold, it will just drop leaves on you all of a sudden. It does not like to get, you know, kind of below that 65 degree Fahrenheit, 18 or so degrees Celsius range. And what people will do when it starts to drop leaves is they'll start watering it more to try to compensate <laughs> for that. And that's actually the opposite thing you need to do. So I think that's where people run into trouble is they, it may get a little too cool and they probably overwater and then you can rot it. So the trick is, is that it, if your plant starts to drop leaves, maybe because it's gotten a little cool, hold back on that watering, let plants stay a little drier. And then in the spring season, when that active growth kicks in again, usually you'll start to see some new growth again and you can start watering it again. Yeah, that's a really good point because that is the lethal combination, isn't it? It's cold, yes. but also those roots are really wet and the yes. plant gets soup. I mean, that, that ain't Cambodia, is it? That's, that's right. um, a pretty miserable uh, environment for that kind right. of plant. What about humidity? Is that another potential pitfall for growers? Sure. So, you know, in a home where you may be running air conditioning, you know, it's obviously going to be cooler and it's going to dry the air out. Or if you're running heaters, you know, that can can also be a challenge. So, you you know, you, you want to be careful where you place it if it's near a heat vent or something like that in the winter that can dry it out. Um, you know, certainly if you feel like conditions are dry or edges of the leaves seem to be crisping from low humidity, you could certainly do some misting um, to, to help your plant out. But yes, yeah, certainly a low relative humidity and cool temperatures or overwatering at the soil level, those are probably your, your three main challenges there with this plant. And what about potting mix? I mean, so often plants come from the nursery in not quite ideal compost. Is it hungry? Is it hungry? Well, so what they are fast growers, right? So, so typically, um, you know, they want to grow fast and you want to give them some support. So if you feel like you're struggling and leaves are fading in color, then you, then you may need to feed it. I generally don't like to grow this plant in a potting mix that's heavier in organic matter, just because you run into that issue where things can stay a little too wet. So I usually try to try to use a lighter mix that will drain um, better, that will hold consistent moisture. I like to use a uh, core cocoa fiber that that's a, that's something I like to mix into a uh, potting mix where I want to hold consistent moisture, but I don't want things to be soggy wet. So certainly if, if plants are growing vigorously and they're happy, I don't worry about feeding too much, but if, if things look a little peaked, um, you know, then one thing to check is to make sure that the, the soil is not too soggy. And then certainly, you know, a liquid humus, 
uh, type natural liquid fertilizer is something I like to use on my houseplants during the growing season. Not, nothing too strong. I, I generally don't use synthetic fertilizers just because I, I, I get too much salt buildup in my potting soil. That is great advice, Leslie. Is there anything else we need to know about this plant or is that a potted summary, if you can excuse the pun? I, <laughs> that's a good one. I, I think probably to sustain its girth, if you will, because it does like to grow long and vine. It's a great plant for hanging baskets or large wall planters where it can drape down. So, so think, think hanging baskets or uh, baskets uh, where you could add a pole for support or a trellis for it to grow on. That's where it's going to be happiest. That's great advice. Well, thank you so much, Leslie. And I'm sure that uh, our diva scissors discolors will be thriving before long with your expert advice. Spring is is here. So that hopefully should be the case. (laughs) Good luck, everyone. Thanks to Leslie for her scissors discolor tips. And if you haven't listened to her episodes on plant propagation and grow lights, I'll stick a link to those in the show notes because they are well worth a listen. And there you'll also find links to Leslie's website and social media handles. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the maiden hair fern. I know it's a scary one, but I think you can handle it. See you then. Bye. The music you heard in this episode was Roll Jordan Roll by The Joy Drops and Whistle by Benjamin Banger, both licensed under Creative Commons. Visit my show notes for details. <laughs>